Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner, the biggest gob in the sport. We say the things on here that nobody dares say. Isn't that right, Coogan from IFL and Puppy Parsons? All you lickers that don't say anything, in case you lose your press passes, off with your heads. <laughs> right, here we go. Let's just come straight out of it. No nonsense, yeah? So we've got boxing YouTube channels with 900,000 subscribers, averaging 27,000 views, yeah? What are the other 873,000 doing? That's what I want to know. <laughs> huh? Well, we're not allowed to ask them questions, are we? Because you get called a hater. Right. Johnny Fisher and Babic are going to get at it in the next few days at the Copper Box. Fisher, 11 and 0. 25 year old, blah, de, blah. Babic, we know his story, don't we? He just fought for Bridgeweight World Title and against that Rosinski and got beat. Now, personally, I think that Fisher runs over him too big and strong. But it is what it is, isn't it? Has Fisher got a lot of head movement? No, he hasn't. He's a big stiff. No head movement. He's a sitting duck. But if you can't deal with Babic, a small man, who's basically a plumber, he ain't gonna be he ain't gonna be doing anything, is he? So he does tickets, Fisher. His old man's a big fat slob running around doing more tickets, but he ain't gonna win a British title. They're propping up Eddie Earns shows because they do tickets. It's as simple as that. Any promoter worth his salt is not going to put Johnny Fisher near danger because he want to keep milking it. And if he can have great fighters on his show, Eddie, that don't do tickets, the show's still going to have to be propped up in it by the lesser guys. So don't expect to see him near anybody soon. But they'll try and sell it this weekend as, oh, he's just lost a world title for a bridge away. How many bid you eight world title fights have we had? One or two? Sadly, a, a competitive division, isn't it? It's a new division. So, okie dokie on that one. But I wish Johnny Fisher well. He's trained by a good friend of mine, Mark Tibbs. And I'll be cheering on Johnny Fisher to win. But if he can't run over Babic, you know, he's got problems, hasn't he? He needs to start queuing up at Dole Office and we'll get another trade, doesn't he? Uh, the Big Meech Cobra. Beef, what do I think to it? Well, it's been going on a couple of years now, hasn't it, really, that they don't get on. We all know what Anthony Joshua's done with Robert McCracken. Treat him like a dog. Don't forget McCracken got him out of prison, didn't he? Oh, we all remember that, don't we? Friends to the end, wasn't he then, when he were getting him out of prison and going to court for him and all that. When Anthony Joshua running around Watford beating smackheads up and driving around London in a GB sponsored Mercedes with his Olympic tracksuit on and a nine bar in boot, they owed it eight ounce, wasn't it? And money from one ounce in his pocket. His mobile phone hung him, did it, in court. Point I want to make is this McCracken were good enough to save him them money when he were going to jail and heading for Skid Row. But yet, yeah, Soon as he had a good hiding, first you're angry, then you're upset, then you look for somebody to blame. And I think Joshua's looked to blame McCracken and stuck knifing on him. Now, you can't blame Carl Froch, because he had McCracken from day one, didn't he? They lived together in uh, Clapham, didn't they, above Lennox Lewis's gym. So they lived together, and uh, they stayed together from his first fight again and to his last fight, and he paid in 10% all the way through. Now, Joshua didn't pay McCracken 10% all the way through. So it is what it is, isn't it? Then people are about money. So I can understand Carl wanting to stand up for his former trainer, somebody who was best man at his wedding and his close pal. But uh, Joshua's a big stiff, in my opinion, anyway. Big shit house. I've got no time for him. Uh, we all saw the Black Lives Matter speech he did where they were saying, don't buy anything from uh, white shops and all that. The guy's an arsehole, all right? Walking arsehole, so I hope he gets battered when he fights the bar. So it is what it is. Uh, the price of the tickets for the Wembley show, we, uh, the bar and Joshua, astronomical. Why, why are we letting these people get away with this? 
Normally, £200 tickets are £471 with booking fee. How can that be? Well, it's simple, really. When you get a secondary ticket market companies coming in, they're getting their cut, aren't they? They'll have a deal with promoter and they put their bit on. So I think it's wrong. I think all the tickets should be sold from Wembley Stadium for all boxing fans. Could you imagine if we did this for the FA Cup final? Can you imagine? FA Cup final, Liverpool against Man United, and tickets have all gone to stubble. They wouldn't do that, would they? There would be riots on the streets. So why do boxing fans have to put with that? Why? That's what I want to know. So it is what it is. Uh, who do I think is going to win in Joshua and Debar? I don't know, really. Joshua's got the experience. What is he, seven, eight year older? But Debar dropped him in sparring as a kid. I don't know. Dubois got momentum, and he? You wouldn't say Joshua's last fight's a momentum, would you, really? Usek flogged him twice. And you've got Franklin, a, a, beat, a, a bin man. Then you've got Wallin, Elenius, his four sparring, sparring partners. Then you've got Francis Ngannou in his second fight. Yeah, they've got four wins there, but really, when you look at them four wins, they're in the top... None of them are make top 25, would they? None of them. So, and then... His fifth fight since the second Usyk loss is Daniel Dubois. He's an ex-sparring partner. So Anthony Joshua, he's getting in there with the third sparring partner who we sparred with in the last five fights. That breeds familiarity, in my opinion. So it's not like you're going into the unknown, is it, and facing somebody where your arse all squeaking, is it? It's like, well, I've already sparred him hundreds of rounds and I know what he's about. So there's no danger. It's just like a move around it to pick up a few more million. That's how I look at it. Uh... Who's looking out for boxing fans with all these tickets? I don't think anybody's looking out for boxing fans. Either. They just keep putting their hand out, don't they, and taking offers. If it's not 25, 30 quid for pay-per-views, they're charging astronomical amount for tickets for Wembley. They're pricing out the man in the street. The man who goes to work, who works in a factory, wants to take his son to boxing. They're being priced out now. But how dare I say anything? Because I must be a hater! Oh... Where is big John Fury? He's gone missing. Where is he? Where are you, John? Exactly. You know where to be found. Somebody told me this morning that Tommy Fury's retired. What has he retired from? What, what, he's not had 10 fights, has he? All stiffs. We're losing records. So what, what has Tommy, Refu Tommy Fury retired from? He'll never fight again. Tommy Fury, we're interested in fighting. With record he's got undefeated. Was he a 9, 10 and 0 or something, whatever? He could go to fight an eliminator for a light heavyweight or a cruiserweight title. Domestic, a domestic belt, that is, in the UK. But he's not going to do that, is he? He could fight now for a cruiserweight, eliminator, an area belt. We're not going to do that, not for five, ten grand, are they, when they can pick up all this money fighting YouTubers. So, like I said, somebody said, email me, oh, it's Tommy Fury retired. Who cares? The man's a sausage. You can't bust his way through a wet paper bag. So, like I said, retired from what? Big Malk. Why do we call Big Malk Big Malk? Because his ideas are big, isn't that right, Spencer Fearham? Big Malk slagging the Cobra. Then saying he's his mate. Fearham, let me just say this to you. Get in your car, drive up to Nottingham, knock on the Cobra's door and ask him to put a kettle on and see what happens. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thomas Asamba versus Charlie Edwards. People are saying it's close. Look, I don't want to hear close. It's close. It's in talks. That means it's not close. It's a low-level fight. Charlie Edwards against Thomas Asomba. Pair of them don't weigh 17, 18 stone together, right? It's a small weight fight, right? Thomas Asomba, I know. Uh, he, he fought... He came Sheffield to fight while he did, and I went with his manager, Phil Jeffries, and my mate Pat from Dennis's office to Arena, about 100 miles an hour down Atticliff in a black Range Rover. I thought, oh, my God. And me and Thomas were sat in back rolling about all over the place, but he ended up flogging while he did that night. So I rate Thomas as somber. I like his story for a simple reason. He came over here for Olympics years ago, in 2012, and he didn't go back. You know, him and, him and a couple of others, Surgeon Bomber and another kid, they all jogged on, didn't they, and pleaded asylum, is it, or wherever they pleaded. So they, they managed to stay here. I know Surgeon Bomber's in Maltby, lives in Maltby near me. I don't know where Thomas is living now, but I like Thomas, and 
who were filled after his years. I'd take Charlie Edwards, though, to beat Thomas Asomba. That's what I'd do. I don't mind Charlie. I've been out for lunch with him. He's a nice kid. He's a Joe Gallagher fighter. Or he was. He isn't now, but he's all right. So we're going to finish off with William Crawler. 25-year-old, 4-0. and Sorry, 5-0, and 4 by way of. I reckon he's all right. Super well to it. Or right middle, if you want to call it. He's Million Dollar Crawler's little brother. So he's managing and training him. So... He'll have been fetched up around boxing, and they reckon he's going to be one for the future, so watch out for him, William Crawler. Okie dokie. Like it, really. On a Wednesday, okie dokie. Whew. One piece out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, don't have nightmares. Uh, our sister channel is Porkies International. You uh, no doubt have been watching that, haven't you? And leaving comments. If you aren't, you need to check it out, because it's better than this one. <laughs> All right, go on, Booyaka. Have a great evening.